a wonderful good morning. Welcome, welcome in September, a month of fruitfulness and victory. We thank God that he has brought us so far. Now we are in the ninth month. So we want to thank God for that. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this new day. We thank you that you have brought us so far. We thank you, Father, that we are here. We can speak, we can see, we can hear. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your, your love that has brought us so far. So, Lord, this is your word, back your word. You know who is going to hear about it, and you know what we need. So, divide it accordingly, that none will go empty-handed and change us, let us not go out like the way we came in. Let your word give us what we need in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Today I want to talk about God has got your back. When we hear that from friends, um, boyfriend, husband, mother, brother, sister, whoever who says, I have your back, that means... Uh, I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to stress about it. I don't even have to take care of it if someone has my back. And um, when we hear that God has our, our back, it means that um, God has everything under control. And uh, um, he's working it out for me. He is uh, going, the struggles that we are going through, God is uh, in it, and he will also um, help us to go through that day. So we can read in uh, Isaiah 49, 15 to 16. Isaiah 49, from 15 to 16 says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have engraved you on my palms of my hand. Your woes are ever before me. That is a really, really good um, promise that God says he has engraved your name. He has engraved my name in his palm. That means whatever he is doing, he remembers me. He's looking at that name, and he's going after what uh, after my business. He doesn't just leave me like that and say, it is your problem. Even if a, a human being can forget us, God will not forget us. There are feelings that we have where we think, ah, oh, God has forgotten us. God is not there. God is, yeah, even he doesn't care. But he cares more than you can think of. But the way we feel it, that he doesn't care is because things, some things which we are doing has nothing to do with him. We are in a certain place where he never sent us to go. We are handling these things not like the way we should do, and sometimes we are in disobedience. And we hope in this or disobedience or rebellion that God will come in, but it will not happen. How do we deal with such feeling? We have to, uh, to know the reality that God is under control, knowingly or unknowingly. We could uh, we know it when we spend more time with him, when we know he, who he is in us. If he ever did anything, something for you that you know it was God's hand, you will always see everything that is going on in your life, whether it is good or bad, you will know that God will bring you out of that. But if you don't know the God whom you are serving, you always have doubt to say, oh, I don't know, uh, God forgot me, God doesn't care, God is this or God is that. But you have to know that God's love is, the, is greater than anything we can imagine of. So if we believe that God is backing us, God is doing exactly what God is, is. He loves you, he cares for you, he is for you, so you cannot expect something different. But we can see things that are going, or there are some difficulties, and you wonder, if God is there, why should it be like this? Why is it happening like that? God, God's heart is very different. 
uh, Jesus gave a parable of a, a lost son who came back home. He first said to the father, give me all my, my inheritance so that, yeah, he got his heritage and he went away and used it all. And after it was done, famine came in and uh, he had to go back home. But because he was repentant, he just came back to the father and said, Father, I don't deserve to be even your son. That type of repentance, the father just said to the servants, bring him the garment, bring him the sandals, bring him the ring. He was restored within a second. But if he just came back like anyone who say, I I'm just your son, do me what, whatever you have to do, it would have been very difficult for the father to give him what he should give him according to the attitude he will come with. But since he came with a repentant heart, the father was so grateful to see him again. That is what God does to us, that when we come in a repentant way, God is backing us in every area. But if we are arrogant, if we have such an attitude, don't, rem uh, don't think that God will be there for you in such attitude. There are many ways to know that God is backing us. Um, we can read it in Isaiah 43. 43, verse 2. Hallelujah. It is written, When you pass through waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, I will not, uh, they will not sweep you over. When you walk through fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you uh, please. That is the promise. That means God is everywhere in every step with you. But not in that area where you have decided without asking him whether it is okay to go this way or to go that way. Where you don't see him or where you don't feel him, you have to check, is it the right way? Is it the right thing? You know what is good and you know what you desire. And if you desire it and it is not in God's uh, ways, then don't expect him to be in there. There are many promises he has given us that shows that God is in everything. What then shall we say in response to those things? If God is for us, who can be against us? That is in Romans 8, 3, uh, 31. In Hebrew, it is written, Hebrews 13, 5. Keep your lives free from love of money and be content with what you have. Because God said, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So don't go after something where you feel like, I have to have it, I have to have it. And later you uh, wonder, why am I not getting what I should get? But God says here, I will never forsake you. So don't do anything for money. Don't do anything loving it so much. Know that God will not leave you like the way you, you are. God will always come through in every circumstance you are going through. Uh, God was telling Joshua here in Joshua 1, 9, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be Discourage, for the Lord your God will be with you whenever you go. God is promising us he will back us in every area. But it will depend also from your or from my attitude, from my way of living. And uh, if I get the glory, <laughs> I, I will not expect God that he will come through. Whatever we get, we have to give God the glory. Whatever he let us pass through and be victorious, let us give God the glory. Whatever God um, takes away from you, give him the glory. We can see also um, where Joseph was taken to Egypt and whatever he went through. Because he was believing God for protection, for deliverance from everything. So God come went through and helped him out of whatever it was and just put him in that position. Even it could be that uh, Joseph didn't expect to be 
the governor of uh, Egypt or the second man to Pharaoh, but God, according to Joseph's behavior and attitude, so God made him to be that very person he, wa he was made to be. But if we feel like God have to go through for me because I believe in him, but I behave differently, it can come to an a disappointment that it will not be like that, like the way we wish to be. Hallelujah. If we read in Isaiah 41.10, it is written, Do not fear, I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. That is the promise God is giving us, that he will not let us uh, be there without help. He is backing us. And if you are doing God's work, he's backing you. If you are going where God sent you, he's backing you. If you are doing what God has told you to do, he's backing you. And if you stay also in that line where he put you, he's backing that too. But if you are on your way, running astray, he will help you to come out if you are willing. If you repent, God will bring you back to the place where you are supposed to be. But don't expect that when you stay big-headed, that he will still come through for you. We, uh, God to stand with us, God to be for us, God to fight our battles. We have to be obedient. We have to be in his ways. Hallelujah. God doesn't want us to be um, isolated. He desire to have to enjoy what he has given us. But um, we shouldn't be just uh, in that what we have. We shouldn't think that is all what he can give. He has more for us if we are ready for us. God, he has engraved your name, my name in his palm for a reason. You are on his heart. He's thinking about you. He's looking to you. He's just looking to see that you will be there where he should, you should be and not uh, be in the other place. When we fix our eyes on the past, on hearts and mistakes, we are stopping ourselves to be able to see God's move. We are sp stopping ourselves to see how God uh, really is. You can only see how God really is when he brings you out of something, when he heals you, when he delivers you. But your eyes have to be open. But if I still fix my eyes from that which didn't work out, that which couldn't, I, that I couldn't get, <laughs> I cannot see God at work. I will just be complaining. So we have to fix our eyes on the word of God. We have to fix our eyes on God's uh, God is a word, God is proclamation, whatever God has promised us. Just hold on that word that God has engraved his, my name in his hand. That means God is watching over me. God, God is watching over all the promises he has given me. God is watching over what I'm doing. That means you also have to behave really good. I can remember one day, uh, you know this Michael who says, I'm bringing good news, yeah? We were um, at a breakfast and I said, ah, but you're all praying like uh, that you are Jesus. It could be very hard because you have to react like that. You have to like, live like that. And then he asked me, shouldn't we? Wow. <laughs> it was really a good question that if I believe in Jesus, if I'm a child of God, shouldn't we behave like that? Shouldn't we just walk in that way? So if you expect God to back you, so you have to behave that way. And you have to know the word of God that backs that word that says God has engraved his, my name in his hand. So if I behave another way around, it will be very difficult. Hallelujah. Father, God, help us with our life. We choose to come to you first. Thank you for these verses that let me, let us know that you have got our back. 
You are faithful, God. You are mindful of us and you take care of us. How wonderful that is. We choose to ask you for help and not trying to figure it out on our own. Thank you, Lord, for being our present helper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.